AJA Video Systems, proud supporter of Just Seen It, offers a wide range of professional acquisition and post-production solutions. Learn more at AJA.com slash PTV. Brothers Ross and Clark Edwards have set up an unusual business. We change people's minds without them knowing we did it. Like Jedi mind tricks. Like Jedi mind tricks, exactly. Through manipulating human behavior, they can make their clients' goals come true. You're offering me an alternative to fate. Yes. Okay, sure, I'll take two. But Clark's bipolar condition threatens to run their business off the rails in Mind Games. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm Brenna. And I'm Sean. Next up is Mind Games, the new mid-season replacement show on ABC. We've all just seen it. All right. I'm thinking of who's going to start first. Aaron. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, we've seen two episodes, and the pilot did not sell me, but the writing did get better. There are some curveballs here in terms of uh, the kinds of characters that we get to deal with. Uh, our lead character, played by Steve Zahn, is bipolar, has some sort of mental illness, and he uh, and his brother, played by Christian Slater, starts some kind of firm that helps people using mind powers. It's actually a really fascinating concept. I, I find it to be a mix of Inception and Lie to Me. Sure. Um, I, I except it's, it's real life Inception yeah. using psych existing psychological research to implant ideas into people's heads to get them to do what you want. I thought the pilot raised some interesting questions, and I thought as the show went on, it kind of dumped all those questions. I mean, the actions that they're doing where they're basically controlling people's thoughts and making them do things, that's morally questionable. Yes. And yet, by the time the show kind of keeps going away from the pilot, we're dropping a lot of those moral questions, and we're just sort of saying this is going to be a procedural show where we're going to have a case each week, and then we're not going to raise these interesting moral elements yeah. to it. And I, I thought, well, why waste what was a good opportunity there? To me, I don't know, I'm just, we're on the opposite side of the coin. I was thinking the pilot episode just didn't have me connect emotionally with any characters. I just didn't feel any weight. I felt like Steve Zahn's persona, this, this, this character that he's created, was just too manic and too over the top and really didn't have any layers. What if we started the way that we agreed we were going to start, which is by saying that I'm severely bipolar. My academic career recently imploded when the university became aware that I was having an affair with a 22-year-old undergraduate student. Also, <laughs> Ross here just finished a two-year stint in a minimum security prison. So in the first episode, Steve Zahn is manic. He's, ha he's at a high constantly. We never see him at a low. I don't know enough about bipolar disorder to say whether it's accurate or not. Right. That but was a thing I struggled with a lot, actually, is because I don't know anybody who has this particular kind of affliction, I couldn't tell whether or not he was being genuine. Yeah. It felt a little over the top at first. But as the show went on, they seemed to have forgotten that he has bipolar disorder, and instead he's just quirky and talks a little loud. Yeah. Well, wait and a minute. I mean, he, he may not necessarily be on a high anymore, but that doesn't mean that he's forgotten how to play this character. If anything, I thought his transition into being a more level-headed person was good for his character. I, I want to see him manic and I want to see him depressed, but I, I don't need manic all the time and I don't need depressed all the time. Wait, are you on our side? Yeah, I guess I am. Oh, I'm sorry. I just assumed you'd be against this. You know what? You should really be sitting over here. You know what, Megan? Why don't you sit opposite Ross? <sighs> Why? Because looking at someone they're attracted to largely destroys a person's ability to form a cogent argument. Just, you, yeah, go around. Stop, stop, stop. Just everybody, sit. And turning something like bipolar disorder into just a quirky attribute, like they even describe the character as quirky in, in the synopsis of the show, it's sort of belittling. Being that we've only seen a couple episodes, it's hard to tell how exactly his character is going to be for the entirety of the show. One thing I can say about the acting, though, is I am not a fan of Christian Slater. I haven't I been am. for years. <laughs> the last movie I really liked him in was True Romance, and that was 1992 or 93. He's got the same blank expression on his face. He doesn't, his emotional range is angry, a little less angry, and kind of whispering. And I just think that in comparison to Steve Zahn, especially after the second episode that we watched, Steve Zahn is so much more interesting as a character and as an actor than Christian Slater. I liked Christian Slater. I think that he's appropriately sleazy for the type of uh, ex-con character yeah, he's how playing. How many times has he been sleazy in the last 10 years? Um, I think it's also difficult when Steve Zahn is so kind of manic and crazy all the time that Christian Slater is more or less relegated to the straight man role. And he's in a more thankless performance. Yeah. What if instead of leaving all the big moments to fate, 
We manipulate them with 60 years of research into human behavior, stacking the odds in your favor so that when it really, really mattered, you came out on top. Our showrunner here is Kyle Killen. Uh, he's only got two other shows under his belt, Lone Star and Awake, but both were critical successes. Didn't do very well with the audiences. They were canceled after one season. I think that this is the show that could bridge the gap between critics and audiences if they get back to the basics of the pilot. I didn't watch Lone Star, but Awake was a show that kind of worked in the same way as the pilot of Mind Games works. It was a high concept show. There were some really interesting elements to it about this guy who was in a coma and living two parallel lives, and I think audiences weren't really ready for it. And so ABC in picking up this pilot maybe said, we don't want to have another Awake on our hands. We need to make this more of a show that people can easily digest. And by doing so, my fear is that they've rendered it into something that isn't special at all. Mind Games has a promising pilot, but I'm afraid it's going to rid itself of some of the more interesting elements. Because of the strength of that first episode, though, I'll give it a stream it. The first episode was a little underwhelming, but the show does find its footing. It manages to tell an interesting story in a unique way, but it's not groundbreaking, so I'm going to say stream it. The show has great potential, a fascinating concept, a promising showrunner, and Christian Slater. So I say, see it. So our votes add up to two full tickets, which is a stream it for Mind Games. Cheers. Cheers. You know, a bad episode of Mind Games is a terrible thing to waste. Oh, God. There's something here, and, and I'm gonna watch. Just Seen It is made possible by Adobe and the Adobe Creative Cloud, including Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop, and After Effects. More information is available at bit.ly slash adobe ptv.